Welcome everyone. We are about to enter the Metal Thin Films Laboratory, which is one of many laboratories that we will visit today. This one in particular focuses on the deposition of metal thin films and metal alloys for quantum technologies and classical technologies alike. The research can be performed on the metal thin films themselves, such as quantum materials, or the research can be performed on the devices which come from the deposition, the deposition of such thin films. In a moment, I will activate the 360 degree camera and we will be able to see a wide angle view of the vacuum chambers and the control components for the vacuum equipment. Now I will activate the 360 degree camera and you will hear a beep. This will give us a wide angle view of the laboratory. What we're looking at here is one of the vacuum pumps. This vacuum pump can be placed in series, and if you want to get relatively high vacuum out of a vacuum chamber, then you can suck out the air from the chamber using a very big pump like this. So, what we're looking at here is a magnetron sputtering chamber. This is a vacuum chamber that has, that's been installed with an arrangement of electron guns. So these electron guns Artists are very similar to the electron guns that you would find in an X-ray machine. So, this, this electron gun arrangement here has to be water-cooled. So these metal lines here are actually water-cooling lines. And then it has a high-voltage source being sent to the cathode inside of the chamber. And what this does, what this arrangement of electron guns does, is it essentially melts a piece of metal so there are pieces of metal, like one piece of metal for every electron gun. And then you can aim the electron gun and control it with these control components here in the back. And you can program it or semi-automatically control it so that you could melt a specific metal for a specific amount of time. And then you can use that to create thin layers of metals on top of each other which is deposited typically on a substrate. So the substrate could be like a silicon wafer, and that would be placed right there in the center of the chamber, as you can see in this little window. And then you can also store the silicon wafers on this side of the chamber, and we, we call this like a, a cassette. So that's what this chamber does. And that's what it looks like. There's a similar chamber on this side with the control components here. This magnetron sputtering chamber is what we call a facing target magnetron sputtering chamber. And this one has more moving parts. The one on this side does not have as many moving parts in it. However, this one has robots, robotic components in it. The cassette that holds the silicon dioxide substrates or magne magnesium dioxide substrates can be placed here. And then the robots can allow you to exchange or move around the substrate inside of the chamber so that you can deposit a metal, a thin layer of metal, even one atomic layer of metal on top of a, on top of such a substrate. And then you can do this over and over again if you want to create a very complex, complex chip, complicated chip for research purposes. And so that's what the thin film, the metal thin film laboratory looks like. Thank you. Now we, we can actually move on and go to visit a clean room. Okay, so we are in the clean room right now and I'm wearing the clean room setup. I got my clean room suit on. <laughs> so this is the electron beam lithography system that we have. This, this uh, setup here is typically used for leveling the sample holder. We have laser components and all that. And then we also have the electron beam lithography system, which is featured in one of the GitHub repositories that I created. And then these are the sample holders for the for the chips 
And then you can also place a silicone wafer on top of the sample holder if you wanted. So this is this is one of the silicone wafers here, just a bare substrate. If you want to see it again, that's the bare substrate. So there you go. Okay, so let's move on. This is the control system for the electron gun and we also have like a bunch of a uh, bunch of other setups that is very similar to this scanning electron microscope so the scanning electron microscope it, of course we use this for inspecting the samples and this one has cryogenic components on it for extracting moisture from a sample in case the moisture the sample has some tiny microscopic amounts of moisture and it makes makes the image a lot clearer it improves the the resolution maybe not resolution but but some other it, it gets rid of the moisture if the moisture is a problem and of course we have storage bins things like that for for the different kind of resists like this one's dedicated to e-beam resists and solvents and then we have a number of wet benches so this wet bench here, we use it to spin coat the, the thin film, the uh, a very thin coating of like an e-beam resist and something similar to whatever, whenever, you, whenever you're performing nanolithography, you can perform that here on this machine. Okay, so if we move on to this side, this of course is where we do the the sonication this is a sonication chamber to perform lift off so that way we can uh, remove the excess resist material and things like that that we don't want from the that, that we don't want on the chip so this is our clean room and then we also have uh, an atomic force microscope on this side of the the chamber on this side of the clean room Okay, so that should be good enough for this side. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the other side of the clean room. So this, of course, this, this setup is for performing laser lithography. So this is going to be another direct right lithography system that we have. But, of course, with laser, you can only get micron scale resolution or a couple hundred nanometer resolution, but it's it's not quite, you, you'll never reach a hundred nanometers uh, with this particular laser lithography equipment. So, however, it is uh, fairly fairly decent for obtaining a device for, for uh, quantum properties. So if you want to create a quantum device, you can create it with this device, with this machine setup. And it's, that's also possible. And then we have some other mask lithography systems like this set up here. And this is the sample, uh, not sample holder, the mask holder for the lithography system. And we can expose the ultraviolet light here. So this is just one such example here. And of course the wet benches, similar to what I showed you before. Okay. And this, this is one of our deposition chambers. This is primarily for depositing electrodes on the device. And perhaps if you want to create some other novel or new kind of uh, thin film, custom thin film, you can do it with this chamber, but the, the control is, is not as precise as you would get out of a, uh, uh, dedicated laboratory so this is not necessarily dedicated to depositing the thin film stack for a regular device this is has this has a limited number of materials that it can deposit it on but this is uh, it does have a selection of uh, metals like pure gold 
So we do have some chromium here, for example. I'll show you. This is one of the chromium, one of the chromium uh, sources we have. And then we have some sources for gold as well. Let's see, is the gold? Yeah, the gold is typically inside of the chamber. It's like a pure chunk of gold. But yeah. Now we have solid iron inside of a inside of a box. Maybe maybe I can show you. I, I have a tripod here, so I can open it. There's a solid chunk of uh, pure iron. And you can place that inside of this chamber if you want to deposit uh, material onto a substrate. So that's also possible. This does something very similar. And I think there are some, there are some uh, public YouTube videos that show setup similar to this one as well. This is a, what we call an AJA sputtering system. This chamber here, this is what we call an ion mill. So we have uh, an ion source situated here, and then the ions, they fire into the chamber, and then the, the vacuum chamber has a sample, and we can slice into the sample using uh, the momentum of uh, argon atoms. So we can, we can uh, ionize the argon atoms and then fire it at a, at a substrate, and we can slice into the material uh, very slowly. If, if I could show an animation of that, that would be great, but probably not today. Uh, I will try to work on something to animate that in the future, but for now, uh, <laughs> we'll have to use leave it to the imagination. So it's just a beam of ions. Think of it as a beam of energy sort of slicing into a substrate, except that you can... Ex you can uh, slice into the entire substrate over a large area rather than focusing it on a specific area. So like if you had a laser beam and you wanted to cut into some material, then it would be like a focused beam. But this, this ion uh, gun, this ion uh, grid that's being fired into, allowing you to fire argon atoms into the chamber, is more like a, a wide beam. So it's a large beam that goes into the entire uh, chamber. So. It allows you to give you, give some amount of control over how much you you're cutting into a material. So that's what this whole setup is about. We have some something similar here. This is what we call a plasma. This is more like a ion plasma based uh, etching system. So we call it reactive ion etching system, and it has a number of gases that it plas it. Uh, you give it some energy with a high voltage and then you can try to react with the sample and then it'll it'll uh, etch into the sample but this is a little more complicated to use but it's uh, still still uh, one of the many options you can have and now we have some other equipment here for performing deep reactive deep ion etching or more like a, some, some sort of experimental deep etching and then we also have another this is one of our new equipment but it's more dedicated to the sputtering it's very similar to the to the other a, AJA system except that the this one has more sputtering guns you would say so the, the guns are located on top of here, and you can place mu multiple metals, and you can also sort of do a kind of co-sputtering, if I'm correct. And then this is where our liquid nitrogen is located. So we want to fill up liquid nitrogen. We can place a thermos here, and then refill it into the into the chamber. And then we have another setup here. I don't use this equipment. I believe it's used for growing some kind of crystals. But 
but that's what this setup looks like. <laughs> Okay, so now we can exit the clean room. We will move on to the next clean room and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at some of the other, other uh, thin film patterning components there are. So stay tuned. This is another one of our laboratories that we have. This one is dedicated to the testing of the material properties inside of a, a magnetic field, high magnetic field. So this is what we call a PPMS, or Physical Property Measurement System. And it does have a very powerful magnet in it that can be cooled down to about four degrees Kelvin or so. And you can place the probe inside of this part of the chamber, and then the probe will send a tiny chip sample inside of the chamber. And then you can record whatever it is you need to on the setup. And of course, this is just a preparation area for placing the chamber, placing the sample into the chamber. Okay. Now we can move on to the next line of code. So this laboratory is dedicated to testing out materials or testing out uh, mostly devices. So you can actually apply these metal probes. There are tiny needle probes here in, on this testing stage. And that allows you to apply a specific uh, voltage or current to a device. And then you can also control the magnetic field and apply the magnetic field using these electromagnetic coils. The magnetic coil can be placed in this configuration, horizontally or vertically. And then the, the, the setup can actually be programmed using this computer here. The so computer has LabVIEW software on it, and then you can program, use that to automate the testing of the devices or perhaps even a a bare chip sample if you want or if the experiment allows you to test a bare chip sample you can do that and then on this setup I show this in one of the quantum grad lectures where you can program the computer so that it can extract the testing results in real time from a device you can actually probe the device on this testing stage floating testing stage, and then you can also uh, apply it with a, a radio frequency pulse or microwave pulse, depending on the needs of the experiment. So that's what this testing setup does. All right, now we can move on to the, the next segment.